Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to go through uh, the sidewall markings on a tire. We're also going to look at damage that can happen to a tire along with wear patterns due to vehicle issues. To get us started, when you look at the side of a tire, there's a lot of information on it. And we'll break down what all these things mean. But the ones I want to highlight are the tire size, the load index, speed rating, whether it's a all season tire or a summer tire. And then over to the other side where we talk about maximum tire pressure along with um, tread wear and traction and temperature ratings. So those are things we'll get into as we go along in these labs. Now the next part I want to talk about briefly is the tire size. The first number of our tire size is how wide the tire is in millimeters. The second number is the height of our sidewall. It's a percentage of the tread width, so 55% of 195 would be how tall the side of my tire is. Uh, typically the higher the number, the taller the tire, the lower the number, the skinnier the side of the tire. Then we get into the tire construction. In this case, R stands for radial tire construction, which is very common on most of our modern cars. We then move into the rim size. In this example, a 16 inch wide rim. That's followed up by the load capacity of the tire. And you would have to reference a chart to understand what this actually means in terms of the amount of weight the tire can support. And finally, our speed rating. Again, you would reference a chart to figure out what this actually means as far as the maximum speed of this tire. The next item I want to discuss is the DOT or Department of Transportation date stamp on the side of the tire, and it might be on the outside of the tire, it might be underneath the vehicle on the inside of the tire. You'll see a spot where it says DOT, and then it's an oval shape that goes around it. And there's a lot of them that look similar, like these other two, but you find the oval shape that has four letters in it, four numbers in it, excuse me, and that will tell you the date the tire was manufactured. In this example, the first two are the 42nd week, of 2002. You see that over on this side. Typically you want to see all four tires on a vehicle have a very very similar date stamp. If one tire is newer or different than the other three that typically means that tire was replaced. Generally for most vehicles you want the front two tires to be the same, the back two tires to be the same. On an all-wheel drive vehicle you want all four of them to be the same. So that's why paying attention to the date stamp can help you identify tire issues. Now the next section I want to focus on is tire damage. And the key thing about this is this damage is not due to a vehicle problem. This is simply just bad luck. Uh, in this picture here, you'll see a nail into the shoulder of the tire. Nothing this person could have done to avoid that other than driving on a different road. Um, once a nail or a screw or an object goes into the shoulder of the tire here, that is not fixable. The tire would need to be replaced. If it was closer to the center portion, that might be fixable. Moving over here to the right side, you'll see a bubble in the side of this tire, and that is due to impact. Uh, this vehicle either hit a pothole really hard, hit a curb really hard, or maybe it was debris in the road they hit, but you can actually see on the rim right here where there's rubber marks because the tire deflected in so hard, you can actually see where the rubber smeared it. Again, no way to fix this, but that tire would need to be replaced. Um, the structure inside of it is now compromised and air is making its way past it. This will pop, especially driving at higher speeds and the tire will rupture pretty violently. No way to fix it, you just have to replace the tire. In our third picture, you're gonna see chunks of rubber missing from the tread of the tire. This is typically caused by driving on rough roads, be it gravel roads, a lot of construction vehicles driving off-road um, or on shoulders or roads under construction. It's just all that sharp gravel beats up the tread of the tire and eventually you end up with chunks of rubber missing. Um, this isn't necessarily a big deal, but if it were to get deep enough or a big enough um, chunk or patch of rubber was missing, you might have to replace the tire. But this is a case where you would want to inform the customer, 
yeah, you're starting to have this issue. Uh, maybe you want to drive on different roads or find a different way to commute so that you're not uh, tearing up the tread so bad. In our final picture, you'll see lots of cracks in the side of the tire. Um, typically, we would call that dry rot. Generally, it's an environmental issue. It's the sunlight. It's UV rays from the sunlight. Uh, it's basically drying out the rubber of the tire. All these cracks start forming. There's no way to fix them. You would just have to replace the tire once it um, got bad enough. Some real minor ones is pretty normal on a little bit older tire. But when you start seeing this many cracks, it's time to replace the tire. Um, in addition to UV rays, this can also happen because the person drove on the tire while it was flat or really low. Um, that can really damage a tire and compromise the internal um, strength of it. So when you start seeing this many cracks, that's uh, not a good sign. Usually time to replace that tire. So all four of these pictures are due to either road hazard issues with hitting stuff on the road or simply age of the tire. Nothing wrong with the vehicle itself, just simply a tire issue. Now these next set of slides are going to be the opposite. These are all vehicle related issues. So if a customer comes in and you observe what I'm about to show you here, any one of these six in the picture, if a vehicle comes in with these issues, you would want to talk to the customer and say, you have a bigger problem besides your tires and you need to fix that problem or your new set of tires are going to wear out really fast. Um, typically, customers are a little hesitant with this. You have to show it to them, explain to them what the problem is, which is why I'm taking the time to make this video. So let's go through these. First one is called toe wear. Um, and the slang term for it is typically feathering. What you'll see is the tire has these areas of rubber kind of sticking up because the tire was literally being dragged, not sideways, but on an angle. And it's being scuffed in a way it's not meant to be. And so you end up with these ramp shape areas on the tread. And when you rub your hand along it, it's smooth one way and it's sharp if you move your hand the other way. That's called feathering. It's an alignment issue. If you put a new set of tires on, the exact same thing is going to happen again. So this vehicle would need an alignment to correct this issue. Generally, just a basic toe alignment would do the job. Again, over here, you can see areas of the rubber sticking up um, because there is a basic In our next slide, we're going to talk about tire wear due to camber, which is how a tire leans. Uh, here's kind of a drastic example. We will see this tire slammed in really, really aggressively. This part of the tire is not touching. This corner is. That's going to cause it to end up with wear on one side of the tire and not the other side. Um, in a not so drastic example, what you would end up with is a tapered wear on the tire, where it's worn more on this side, less on this side. Typically this happens because people hit curbs. My students are out drifting in a parking lot, they don't see a curb, they smack into it, they bend the wheel in a little bit, and now you end up with camber wear. Um, again, this is a vehicle issue. If you put a new tire on, the exact same thing is going to happen again. So you would need to correct the bent control arm or bent suspension. Uh, tie rod maybe, whatever it is that's bent, it needs to get replaced. Now we get into tire wear due to overinflation, too much pressure. This typically happens because somebody goes to a gas station, they fill the tire till it looks full, but they don't actually use a pressure gauge. What typically happens is the tire gets a rounded shape to it, just the center hits the road, the outside shoulders do not, and now you are out the center of the tire. Again, that's usually common because people just fill it till it looks full and they don't use a pressure gauge. There's no way to fix this. Um, you would need to replace the tire and then teach the customer how to properly fill their tires to the correct amount. The next example is the other extreme, underinflation. This is far more common. People forget to check their tire pressure. They go from summer to winter. Temperature goes down, pressure goes down, and now you end up with a tire with too little pressure in it. You can see by this picture, the center actually buckles up and it creates an area that doesn't touch the road. 
So this side wears out, this side wears out. The center still has a lot of tread on it, but you end up with a ball tire on the outside edges, tread on the middle. This is a tire that would need to be replaced. And you would want to explain to the customer that they need to have a tire gauge and check their tire pressure more often to prevent this from happening again. Then we get into flat spots, otherwise known as patch wear. Patch wear is typically due to wheel balance issues. Uh, I'm going to exaggerate as I say this, but this would be the heavy spot in the wheel. As that wheel spins at high speeds, it would go up, slam in the ground, go up, slam in the ground, up, slam in the ground. As that process rapidly repeats, you end up wearing away a patch of rubber like this one. No way to fix this. You'd have to replace the tire and balance that wheel so that it doesn't happen again. Um, it is also possible if it's a little bit more of a severe case of wheel balance, uh, you get these re real weird random patches. So you'll have a bald spot, a little bald spot here, a bald spot, little one, random patch of rubber missing. That's typically caused by a dynamic wheel balance issue where the tire is not only shaking up and down, but it's got a little bit of a side to side wobble. So you're scrubbing the tire back and forth on the pavement. This is also a wheel balance issue. Um, there's no pattern to it, which is what gives it away compared to the next one I'm going to show you, which is typically a suspension issue. Um, what you'll notice with this one is it's predictable. You have a diagonal line, diagonal line, diagonal line, diagonal line. It's the same pattern all the way around the tire. And you can even see from the sign where it's worn, worn, worn. This is typically um, poor alignments or something on the suspension is worn or the shocks have gone bad and you're starting to get a wheel it's kind of bouncing up and down uh, not being held in place like it should but the diagonal scallop is what gives this away those diagonal lines that are consistent all the way around the tire that's what makes it different than wheel balance this is a suspension issue typically suspension that's worn out and that concludes our tire inspection video um, the key takeaways are identifying what is a vehicle issue versus what is a simple bad luck road hazard issue or just uh, signs of an older tire. Thanks for watching and I wish you guys luck as you complete this lab.